Hello everybody and welcome to the scanning section where we will code the tools that we will use to scan our target. Now before we actually start coding, let's see what scanning really means. So in Kali Linux there comes a tool which is actually called Nmap. It allows us to scan the targets for the open ports which could potentially run vulnerable softwares on them which we can actually possibly exploit afterwards. So this is the first part of actually collecting some information about the target we want to scan for its open ports and we also want to see what kind of version of software are they running on those open ports. After that, once we find that out, we actually want to, uh, for example, see if that version of software is vulnerable to some attack or not. Now, in order to do that simply in Python, uh, pardon me, in Kali Linux, you just type here nmap and then the IP address or the host name of the target. So if you just type here nmap and then let's say we use the IP address of my laptop, which is 192.168.1.15, which I checked out right now. And if I just try to scan it, which I can do it uh, with this command, it will just scan my laptop for the open ports. And as we can see, it finished relatively fast and it found an open port, which is port 80, which services the HTTP. So let's try to actually uh, code something similar to this, which will allow us to actually scan a target that we specify and which will actually check if that target has an open or closed port. So let's see how we can actually do that. So let's just clear the screen with the clear command. And let's in our Python programs, first of all, let's delete the test.py from the previous video. We do not need it anymore. You can delete it with the rm command, which you should be already familiar with. And right now, let's create an actual directory where we will only save the files for our scanning. So let's call the directory scanning. Make sure to make it in the Python progress directory. So our mkdir scanning which is also a command you should be familiar with. And if I just type your ls, we have our scanning directory. So let me change my directory to scanning. And let's actually uh, write the program and call it, for example, port scan onepy So since we will code multiple ones, we will try to actually uh, make them better and better as we go. So let us actually just type here port scan onepy and let's try to write a simple port scanner, which will just scan a simple port. So how can we do that? Well, first of all, as I said in the previous videos, what you need to do in every Python program you run in Kali Linux, it must start with a line, which is this. So hash exclamation mark slash user slash bin and then slash Python. Now, why is that? If you skipped those through those introductory videos, basically this just specifies the path to the uh, Python libraries that we will use. So this is something that you must have in your program. And after that, what we want to do is we actually want to import a library which will allow us to perform the connect, fun uh, the connect function on target ports. Now, performing that connect function will actually allow us to see if that port is closed or opened. If we manage to connect to that port, that means the port is open. If we get connection refused, for example, that means that the port is closed. So we will use the, the library core socket. So we will just specify here socket. You specify the library to import with the import function right here. So import socket will give us uh, access to all of the functions that are in this library called socket. And right now, what we want to do is actually create a socket object and then basically perform the function which will actually connect to the port itself. So in order to create the socket object, it can be a little bit tricky uh, syntax. So make sure to follow with me. You can call it anything you want. I will call it sock in my case. So sock equals this sock basically represents a variable. So we can just uh, put anything to that variable with this equal sign. And we want to make it a socket object. So how do we do that? We just type here socket dot socket. Open uh, brackets. So open and close them. And inside the brackets, you want to type socket dot af underscore inet uh, uh, comma socket dot sock underscore stream. So this is how we actually define the socket object itself. And we actually put it as a value to this variable right here, which we call sock. Now, this socket 
dot af underscore inet basically stands for the IPv4 address. So we will be performing the connection to the IPv4 host, which is the IP4 and not IPv6 address. And this socket dot sock underscore stream represents that we are going to use the TCP packets in order to perform the connection. Now, TCP and UDP, we want to perform the TCP three-way handshake and not UDP packet. Well, basically, for those of you knowing, UDP is actually connectionless, but it, it really doesn't matter at this point. Right now, it matters that you know that this stands for the TCP packets. So we will be trying to perform the three-way handshake with each port of the host. But for now on, let's just actually try to perform it with only one port. And then we will see how we can actually scan multiple ports and not just one. So right now, what we want to do is actually just type here uh, the value host, which we can set to be, for example, the, the my laptop, uh, which is 192.168.1.15. Now, make sure that you actually, uh, don't worry, I will show you how you can install the virtual machine where you can actually perform all of these scans and all of these uh, attacks that we will do. But for now on, you can just select any IP address you want, such as the IP address of your Kalinux machine itself, so you can actually scan yourself, or the IP address of your actual uh, main PC or Windows machine, in case you're running Windows. Now, how can you check the IP address on Windows machine? You just go to the uh, tab right here, type here CMD, and then in your command prompt, once it opens up, you can just type your IP config, and the result of the IP config will actually give you your IP4 address, which is the local address, which in my case is this one right here. So make sure to navigate to the IPv4 address and select the uh, address right here, which is in my case 192.168.1.4, which is the IP address of my Windows 10 machine. So we can scan my Windows 10 machine. Let's just type it right here, 192.168.1.4. We close the quotes since we specified the host. We also want to actually specify the port. So let's specify the port to be, for example, port 443. And we will try to perform the connect function to this port on this host. Now, this is the most simple port scanner. Don't worry, we will scan and we will make the more advanced port scanners later on. But from now on, I'm just showing you the basic principle behind actually scanning and connecting to a certain port. So let's try to actually connect. So in order to do that, we actually need to make a function. So in order to specify the function, you just type here def and then port scanner. And in the port scanner, what we want to do is in the brackets, type here port. Now, let me just explain this. In order to declare a function in Python, you need to use this def before it. Then the port scanner is the name of the function that we want to create. And the port is the argument that we will pass to the function. Now, after that, all you need to do is specify two dots, which basically means that the code below and the code that we will uh, basically tab in will be the part of the function itself. So how do we do that? Just press here, enter, tab this, and we can just type here something like this. If sock dot connect underscore ex, and then in the EX, you specify two open or double open brackets and double close brackets. And inside them, you specify host and then comma port. Let me just write this and then I will explain what this means. So first of all, I will write the code of the function and then I will tell you what all of this means. Don't worry, I will explain it all. So print. port and then percent D is closed and then percent port Oops. and then we just type here else Oops. print port percent D is opened and then port
and then at the end we want to call the function itself. Okay, so this is basically our most simple port scanner. Uh, let me just explain what I did right here. So let's start from the beginning actually. So we created the socket object. This is the I stands for IPv4 and this stands for TCP packets. We declared the host variable to contain the IP address of our Windows 10 machine and we selected the port to be for example 443. You can select here any port in order to try it, don't worry, it doesn't have to be 443 or you can go with the 443 like I did. Then we declare the function which will perform this task right here each time it is called. Now the function is named port scanner and it will take one argument which will be called port. So after that we need to close it with two dots and then we need to tab every code that we want to be a part of the function. So for example if I were to type here any code this will not be a part of the function anymore since it is at the same line as the function itself. But if I were to do this now it would be the code of the function since it belongs and it is tabbed properly. Let me just delete this as this is not really a code. And right now what we do in the function itself we perform the simple if else statement. Now you can look at the if else statement as something like uh, basically you can basically translate it to English so if this doesn't work or if this works then do this else do this. So if socket.connect retrieves an error any type of error which we actually check with this function right here so socket.connect uh, uh, underscore ex we try to connect to the host on port this port so on this host and on this port which we specified in the double brackets separated by comma if it retrieves an error that means that the port is closed since we got the error back so we will print to the terminal port is closed now this percent d basically stands for anything that you specify after the string itself it will be replaced right here so since our port is actually number 443, if this port is closed, this will print port 443 is closed. Else, so in any other case, so if we don't get an error, that means we successfully connected to the target and that means that port is actually opened. So in that case we will print port and then the port number is opened. So let us save this and see if this will work. Now before we save it, this part right here is basically how you can call a function. So if I didn't have this part right here, this function will never be called and this program will not execute this at all. So we need to call the function and we specify the variable inside the function which is our port variable, which will be used throughout this program. So let us save this, Control O to save, enter, Control X to exit. And as you remember, in order to run this, we need to make it an executable first with the chmod plus x. Then we type the name of the file itself, so chmod plus x port scan 1.py. And let's actually try to run it. You let it run, and we can see port 443 is closed. So right now, let us actually try to scan our, our uh, Windows 10 machine with nmap to see if there is any port that is actually opened so we can actually use that port in order to check if our program will print our that port and then that number is opened. So let's type right here. This should finish relatively fast and we can see these are the open ports on my Windows 10 machine. So port 445 is open, port 4, uh, 139 is open and port 135 is open. So let's actually change our program. So nano port scan 1.py. We open the code itself and we change this to 445. Since 445 is one of the ports that was open. We control O enter. We then exit this and we run the program once again with the dot and then slash port scan 1.py. And we can see right now it prints port 445 is opened. So now we know that our program works correctly. It can actually scan port uh, if the port is open or closed. But this is the most simple version of our port scanner. So we will actually in the next few videos try to make it better, implement some different functions, make it scan more ports than just one and so on and so on. So hope you enjoyed this introductory video to the port scans. Now for those of you who are actually 
a little bit more advanced and no Python and all of that. Uh, it might be a little bit too much explaining for your taste, but please stick around. Later on, we will be coding some of the more advanced stuff, don't worry. And later on, the more we go with these programs, the less I will explain what I am doing in them. So, that would be about it for this tutorial. Hope you enjoyed it, and I hope I see you in the next one, where we will actually try to change some of the stuff in our port scan. So, hope I see you there, and take care. Bye.